Okay? Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son does not have life. So the first part we know is that the blessing of God to us is eternal life. Why is that important? Because without eternal life, we cannot enjoy the rest of the blessings. Okay? You can't enjoy the blessings of God if you are dead. You need to be alive to enjoy the blessings of God. So the very th thing that God gives us first is life, so that we can enjoy the blessings. So blessing number one is eternal life. And you have eternal life now, today. And that's the point that Paul makes in his writings, that you have received eternal life in the Son. You are seated with Jesus in the right hand of God in heaven. Your life is hidden with God. You have been given this eternal life. You have been blessed with it already. Second Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, we read earlier, Paul, an apostle, apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. So we have been given eternal life as blessing number one. What else are the blessings? We have mentioned earlier when we talk about the adoption that we are co-heirs of God in Jesus. We are blessed with all that belongs to God. In the book of John chapter 17 verse 10, Jesus said, And all mine are yours, and yours are mine. And Jesus includes us in that. All that is God's is ours. And all that is ours is God's. Okay? Now what is God's and what is ours? In the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, God said, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Okay? All silver, all gold, everything that exists belongs to God and everything, believe it or not, belongs to you. You are an heir to that. You are not following me. Okay? Because this is supposed to blow your mind. Everything that exists belongs to you. Yes. Everything that belongs to God belongs to you. You are not poor. You are not sick. Because you have eternal life in you. You have been given all of this. I know there's a question in your head. We'll answer, the, we'll answer that just now. But I want you to get this idea sinking. That you are blessed with everything you believe or think you're not blessed with. When you think you're poor, you are very rich. When you think you are sick, you are very well. When you think you are not good, you are very good. When you think you are not loved, you are very loved. But I know you struggle with this idea that I don't feel this. But we'll answer that question just now. Why is it that you don't feel that you have all these things? Why is it that your life, maybe, does not reflect that you are blessed in this way? Am I talking nonsense? Because some of you, in your head, your mind is telling you, well, maybe it is true for everybody else, not me. I'm not blessed in the way that he's describing. But I want you to know, first and foremost, that you are blessed in exactly the same way. All that is God's is yours, and all that is yours is God's. Okay? Let's continue. Let's answer the question, but why don't I feel blessed? I would like to tell you a story to illustrate the point. I would like to tell you a story of I.C. and George. Okay? I.C. was born on the 7th of January, 1997. And his father died when he was about 11 years old. And his father had made proper inheritance for him. He was the heir just the way you are an heir of God. Okay? He was the heir of his father. And his father left him 
several millions of rands. This boy is 11 years old. He is a multi-millionaire. But you know what? This boy does not know it. He goes to school with other kids every day. He buys a sandwich. Sometimes he doesn't have pocket money to buy a sandwich. But he is a multi-millionaire, this boy. When he turns 21, he's going to get a phone call and somebody will tell him, by the way, you are an heir of your father and your father has left you 15 million rand. Come sign the papers and it is yours. This boy today doesn't feel blessed, but he doesn't change the fact that he is a multimillionaire. He doesn't change that. But this boy doesn't feel it. When you see him, you won't know it. When you see this boy, he looks like every other boy you know. But he's a multimillionaire. But the sad part is that there is no guarantee that this boy will enjoy those millions. You know why? He might die before he's 21. And that's the sad part of the story. But you see, that is not the case with God and the inheritance he gives us. God guarantees that we will live to see our blessing because he has given us eternal life. So death is not going to rob you of your blessing. Disease is not going to rob you of your blessing. You are going to inherit your millions. You are going to inherit your blessings because God has guaranteed that through Jesus Christ. But Isi may not, may not see his millions, but he is a millionaire today. Now, George was born this year, on the 22nd of July, 2013. You might know George. Okay? George has been born to be a future king. Okay? He was born to a young man called Prince William and his wife Kate on the 22nd of July. The whole world was fascinated by this story because what fascinates them is what that little baby has. That little baby is a multimillionaire. Before he was even born, before the foundation of the world, remember the concept of before the foundation of the world, that we were blessed. Before George was conceived, there were millions for him. There was a kingdom for him. But you see, the sad part is, George may not live to be king. George may not live to be king. But today, George, although he's like any other kid, he is the king in waiting. He lives in a palace. But as he grows up, he might not feel that he is king. And sadly, his parents cannot guarantee him to become king. But you see, with us and God, God has guaranteed that you will inherit the inheritance. You will get the inheritance. God guarantees that. Let's continue to answer this question as I finished. Why don't you feel blessed? Galatians chapter 4, verse 1. Paul says, Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all. This is what I was saying just now. An heir, like I see and George, as long as they are children, they do not differ at all from a mere slave though they are masters of all that they inherit. I see and George have all of that, but as long as they are children, they are not different to a mere slave who has nothing. What does that mean? Paul is saying to you and I, we are heirs like I see and George. We are like mere slaves. But that does not change the fact that the inheritance is there for us. 
We need to 1021 to get it. And God is going to make sure that we 1021 to get it. Unlike I see and George. Okay? The heir, as long as he's a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he's a master of all. That is the reason today you might feel like I see and George. You might feel like a slave. You might feel poor. You might feel sick. You might feel you are a nobody. It is because you are simply an heir. You have not received an inheritance. But the, the fact that you have not received an inheritance does not change the fact that you are a blessed heir. That all that belongs to God belongs to you. That is true today. And God has already guaranteed that in Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 5. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Okay? So our sharing with Christ in his airship translate into sharing also in his suffering. So part of it is that today we will share in the sufferings of Christ. And when we, we suffer with Christ, that is a sign that we are standing to share in his inheritance. Because those that share in the, in the, in the blessings and inheritance of Jesus also share in his suffering. So don't be fooled by a suffering Christian. He is blessed and he stands to inherit what will blow your mind. Don't be fooled by a sick Christian because the life he has ahead of him and the inheritance that lies ahead of him, no eye has seen, nor has it ever entered the mind of human being all that is in store for you. Philippians 1.29 For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for him. So today, you will suffer and not feel like you're blessed. But I want to remind you that in your suffering, rejoice, Paul says to the Philippians. Why should you rejoice? Because that's an affirmation that you are an heir of God and you are in line to inherit all that he has in store for you. First Peter 4, verse 13. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ. Rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. Because when the glory is revealed, it's going to be your glory. That is why today you can rejoice in your sufferings. So we are children we have not received our inheritance yet, like I see and George. But we are no less the blessed children of God. You are blessed by God. All that belongs to God, God has bestowed to you in his will, in Jesus Christ. You are an heir that stands to inherit what mind of man, nor ear of man, nor eyes of man have ever seen or ever imagined. All that is yours. You are blessed, even though you might not feel it. I want to finish with this story of the prodigal son. You remember it very well, but I want to focus on the last part of the story. You know the son, the son who asked for his father's inheritance, and he goes away to a far country, he wastes it, and he comes back home. He comes back home, the father throws a party for him. And the son who stayed home, who was working in the fields, he comes home in the afternoon and he finds there is a party going on. He asks one of the servants what's going on. He tells him, your brother has come back and your father has thrown a party for him. And then the father hears that your son is standing outside very angry. So the father goes out to talk to his other son and say, why are you not coming in to join in the party? He says, I have been here all these years working in your fields. And this son of yours who goes and wastes all your inheritance and he comes back and you are happy and you throw a party for him. You have never asked me to take some of this money and have a party with my friends. What is going on? And this is what the father said to him. And this is what the father wants to say to you if you don't feel blessed today. He said to him, son, you are always with me and all that I have is yours. God bless you.